Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today we're going to be reacting to Mick, James A. Kester's arch enemy, Lee Max traitor toddler, or Gabby Logan's cheater child. Um, these would allow to you videos have been doing well, so I thought I'd do more. Um, always of any, always a fan of anything with James A. Kester in. So um, let's see. He's got some mad stories. Let, let's see this, Mick. Mick. So, Gabby, what is Mick to you? This is Mick, and I deliberately tripped him up during the wheelbarrow race <laughs> at my son's sports day. OK, James, how do you know Mick? This is Mick, and for six months, he was my sworn enemy oh. when a practical joke got out of hand. <laughs> and finally, Lee. This is Mick, he's my son, and I'm only allowed to see him every second Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no, that's not it. This is Mick. I once took him home from nursery instead of my own son. <laughs> so there we have it. Is Mick Gabby's cheated child, James's feuding friend, or Lee's traded toddler? David's team, where would you like to begin? Well, um, <laughs> Gabby, the, uh, the wheelbarrow race, you were also a competitor. What, what, was the, what was the format of the race and how did the accident Your happen? classic sports day wheelbarrow race. Child is the wheelbarrow. I was driving my son as a wheelbarrow and Mick's mum, Barbara, was driving him. And um, there's always a lot, of, I feel our family gets a lot of pressure on sports day because my husband was an international rugby player and I, I did sport. And I, people always look at us as if they're the ones to beat. You know, I always feel that added dimension mm, of mm, competitiveness. Mm, mm. So you were a rhythm gymnast, weren't you? I was a gymnast. Yeah, I think they're looking more at him. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> so we were in the lead, my son and I, mm. and, um, and you know, in, in your peripheral vision, you can feel somebody coming, and as we got to the turn, they were level with us, and, um, and my son's arm buckled, and, oh, um, oh. which is, for a wheelbarrow race, is a bit of a no-no. Mm. So it takes you a couple of seconds to recover. So now we're behind. Quite so painful for your son as well. Perhaps that should be the maintenance. <laughs> Classic sports person. Oh, that's a no-no. <laughs> we need this. <laughs> We got, we got back level with them, and, and I, I'm ashamed, obviously, about what happened next. Um, so I can feel, um, you know, these horrible thoughts coming into my mind, you know, we could take him out, you know, we could... <laughs> wow. <laughs> Come on, this is why we've been taking all the drugs! <laughs> and, um, I basically, I stood on... I stood on his hand. And so, well, I know! Deliberately? <laughs> you were thinking, we should take him out. <laughs> so, um, he, he then slightly buckled, so he... Which then, is a no-no. <laughs> back into the race yeah. and I decided that I couldn't let us win because that could be construed in some people's eyes as cheating. Standing on the opposition's oh. hands. Yeah. In some people's eyes, physical assault. So, <laughs> I, had to, I had to then sabotage us because I couldn't let us win, so I deliberately kind of pushed my son into the ground. So you assaulted two children? <laughs> I kind of just, you know, pretended to trip onto Reuben. So, right. and then he, his arms buckled, double buckle, which is a no-no. No, 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 no. <laughs> and that meant... But Reuben is your boy. Yes, oh gosh, yes, yes, yes. You know, the oh. one with, you know, with the form of the face like <laughs> All right, who would you like to speak to next? OK, um, James, so Mick became your sworn enemy because of a practical joke. That got out of hand. That got out of hand. Yes. So what was the practical joke or prank? First of all, I'll say for the record before we carry on, I hate this boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm nothing but content for him, and I'm furious he's got on this show. <laughs> I think I feel I can only see him every second Friday. <laughs> so what was, the, what was the practical joke, James? He put cabbage leaves in my bed. How did he get in your room? I was staying at his house. On a sleepover? How old are you? <laughs> a few years ago. Yeah, well, he wouldn't have been born. <laughs> he, was, he was nine. And you were, what, 31? <laughs> I was, what, 28? 29? And how do you know him? My, I know his dad. He's, he's his son. <laughs> <laughs> and you were staying at their house? Yes. Why did he put cabbage leaves? Why is, what is, why is that a thing? <laughs> well, it's not a thing until he started doing it. Yeah. There's something severely wrong with him. I don't know why he started... <laughs> but you say st this kind of started stuff. doing it. Was yeah. It, what, what do you mean, start, this is a one, a one occasion? Oh, is it? There. Well, I don't know. <laughs> this is the first of many, David. So you, so I said got out of hand. You I do not use those words lightly. <laughs> so you regularly stay at the house of... Oh, no. Oh. This little man does not restrict these pranks to his own house. He has no respect for anyone's privacy and will cross any boundaries available to him. I hate him with all my heart. Yeah. <laughs> So, so he initially put cabbage leaves in the bed you were sleeping in when you were True. staying at his father. <laughs> yes. Right. And then subsequently, yes. he has followed you and put cabbage leaves in other places you've been sleeping. No. OK. <laughs> what then? He sent me a cabbage in the post. <laughs> he sent me half a cabbage, cling filmed, in a box. I was out when they delivered it. I'd go to the post office to pick it up. <laughs> there was a note inside that said, you got cabbaged again. <laughs> So, OK, so he, he, he's doing that. Did you, <laughs> bearing in mind that this is a minor, did you... It was a major, as far as I'm concerned. 
Did you at any point retaliate? Yeah, but it took me six months. <laughs> what did you do? After six months of this... Well, when you say six months of this, yeah. what is this? There's the initial cabbage leaves in the bed at, yeah. at his house, yeah. and there's the posted cabbage, half cabbage. Yeah. Anything else? Is granddad cabbage meat to my face? <laughs> what does that mean? Gave me a present, it was all wrapped up nice, I thought it was a nice present, I wrapped it, it was another half a cabbage wrapped in clinker. <laughs> Members of the public started cabbaging me. I made the mistake of talking about it on the radio, and then everyone got the idea, and I couldn't turn up to a gig without there being a cabbage hidden somewhere in my dressing room. <laughs> well, thank God you're playing safe and not saying it on telly, eh? <laughs> So, did you retaliate? Did I absolutely did. I removed all of his belongings from his bedroom and replaced them with cabbages. <laughs> That's, I would say, a disproportionate response. <laughs> Six months of my life, David. Six months of my life of not knowing where the next cabbage was coming from. It was horrible. <laughs> I had to go big. I've been cabbage so many times. Somebody started a Twitter account was tweeting pictures of cabbages on me every day. They said stuff like, oi, oi, savoy. It was horrible. <laughs> so that was just the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> Me some slack. No, 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 I would say that anyone that, who can no. enjoy that joke about a lettuce would have to be a sociopath. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on to Lee. Lee, remind us of your story. This is Mick. I once took him home from nursery instead of my own son. Why did you not recognise your own son <laughs> by using your eyes and knowing what he looks like? I, I, I do recognise my own son, but we had this new pram and uh, the pram, he, I put him in the pram. He was very young at the time, because, well, you have to, to go to nursery. And uh, I put a him in the pram. A pram? Nursery? Not a pram. I put him in the pram when they're, when they're sort of tiny. I push you, you made one mistake. You say lettuce, you say cabbage, they're on your ass. You say pram instead of posture. I get to see him every other week. I'm stressed. <laughs> I put him in the posture, right. and then I got chatting to all the other mums and dads and stuff. Got chatting, turned around. Little did I realise that one of the other parents had exactly the same posture. And because he was asleep, I just didn't bother talking to him, so he was asleep. Pushed him and got all the way home. Long walk as well, because he goes to school in London and we live in Aberdeen. <laughs> when, how long was it before you realised? Uh, probably Glasgow. <laughs> um, it was about, it was, believe it or not, uh, preferably do. <laughs> yeah, that's very much the question. <laughs> believe it or not, uh, it was as I went into the front door and I pushed him towards my wife, who was coming towards me, and, and she said, that is not my son. But the other mother would have recognised yeah. your yes. child, so let's, let's go to the let's other mother. Let's go to the other mother. So, what happened there? So, obviously, I'm not there to see the other mother. No, but I, presumably in the police interview, they say, well, you've gone through those details. No, I knew it would be a bit of a nerve-wracking experience, so I thought, I'd better play safe and just keep him. And that's what we did, we just ended up bringing up another child. <laughs> so, um, I got into the house, pushed me into the house, yeah. my wife said, that's not my son. So, I went, oh! I realised immediately what had happened, obviously. I turned around and I raced back to the school very quickly. So, I got in just in time for them to go, what are you? And then... So, you got back, you got back just in got time. Got back in time. Just before Mick's mother was going to start screaming, so my was... child has disappeared, my child has disappeared. Yeah, because, no, because what happened is she, she was getting a bit frantic, but someone had, had calmed her down by doing the obvious and pointing to the child and saying, think, use your logic here. Yeah, there's a child. child abductors don't tend to leave Swap. a child yeah. as well. <laughs> so, David's team. Is Mick hmm. Gabby's cheated child? Maybe. James's feuding friend? Maybe. Or Lee's traded toddler? No. <laughs> I think that the cabbage is... That is a good trick, cos cabbage is going to get warmed up. Stink. I also have, you know, been to uh, many a sports day where, where the parents do get incredibly competitive. Mm -hmm. but I would probably lean towards Gabby. What about you, Melvin? Which way are you leaning? I believe Gabby, but James is just weird, so I believe him even more. <laughs> your, your paranoid view seems to be the whole country's in on it. Now everyone's sending you cabbage. Every time people laugh at me, I suspect they're my enemy, which makes my job very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> You think Gabby, you think Gabby, but James even more. And uh, David thinks it's me, so... Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Um, James. You're going for James. Mick, would you please reveal your true identity? I'm Mick, and I am James's worst enemy. <laughs> yes. Mick is James's feuding friend, and here's the proof that... <laughs> That is what James did to Mick's bedroom. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mick.